Hello and welcome to Civilization VI live stream of a deity game. Um, I'm gonna try to set this up here so that everything is on uh, random as far as our leader is concerned, map type and everything like that. Um, I've played a couple games on deity and uh, what I'm looking for at this point is maybe we can you know, like roleplay a little bit to the strengths of each individual civilization based on who we get. Um, we leave the, the speed on standard as well as make sure everything um, else is, is standardized so that way that you know we're not playing with the same game over and over and over again. And um, I don't know, I have not done a uh, religious victory yet, so I'm hoping that we actually get something to the effect that, that actually lets us play out a little bit of religion on uh, Deity to test that out. Um, but ultimately, let's, uh, let's see what we get. Uh, map type is shuffled around, and this will be fun. From the first stirrings of life beneath water, to the great beasts of the Stone Age, to man taking his first upright steps, you have come far. Now begins your greatest quest, from this early cradle of civilization on towards the stars. There will be those who underestimate you, but you are cunning and full of tricks, Queen Cleopatra. Your charm will establish indestructible alliances with the strongest leaders of the world. Keep your friends close by your side, and you will find yourself untouchable, with the glory of Egypt primed to win over the world. Okay, so Egypt. Um, I have not played as Egypt yet, but uh, everything that I've read from the forums is that they're uh, a little bit underwhelming as far as the the unique unit is concerned. I know there was a couple other uh, YouTubers who have actually gone through and commented about the expense of the Chariot Archer versus some of the other stronger early civilizations. However, this might open up the space for an early kind of conquest deal, uh, which I uh, found has actually pretty been uh, been pretty uh, good in Civilization VI. Uh, the rewards for early conquest in, in general have just been uh, way outweighed the risks. Um, the trade routes to other civilizations, um, that, that could be interesting. Um, you know, that, the fact that other civilizations' trade routes to Egypt are providing, um, plus two food and plus two gold, um, might, you know, maybe, hopefully, maybe we, we're, we're crowded in. Maybe, hopefully, we're surrounded by a lot of other civilizations because, um, you know, that, that could say uh, trying to build out a little bit tall. Uh, the Sphinx, I'll have to rem I, I can't quite remember what uh, improvement that did for us, but we'll uh, I'll check it out in the Civilpedia once we get in. Uh, and 15% production towards districts and wonders placed next to a river. Um... Blood planes do not block placement of districts in wonders. Well, that uh, that could be good. Um, uh, you know, river-oriented build. So let's uh, let's check this out. Let's see what kind of start we get. And uh, we are we are Egypt without much in the way of floodplains. Um, and it looks like pretty close to the tundra here. Um, let's see. Price and the Warrior South. I'm going to settle on spot just because, uh, you know, obviously these the three sheep here plus the, you know, standing on the hill will make it a good defensive position. Um, not that I've experienced too much early problems with capitals coming in and, and as far as invasion is concerned. Uh, but the extra produ production from uh, the these hill tiles will be good, but uh, growth growth might struggle a little bit. So usually I'm the guy trying to conquer Cleopatra because her AI tends to be pretty annoying and no matter what you do, um, she she goes out. Um, typically I always uh, start with a slinger. Um, again, trying to kind of build up uh, for uh, going, going to archery. Um, in this case, uh, we'll go animal husband, husbandry and probably half research archery and then pick up mining. Um, we just have to kind of see what the lay of the land is around us. I mean, we've got some, some freshwater lakes. 
Uh, looks like the river here ends into the south with some tundra, and uh, the landmass kind of looks a little bit small, so um, hopefully this doesn't mean we are stuck on an island because we will have to start playing this game very, very differently than, say, if it's a continental map or if we have neighbors. Um, what are... alright, so... Uh, yeah, ideally, you know, I, I like to start with um, making sure the first citizens, as far as management, I will micromanage the first couple of citizens. Um, this tile is, is obviously the best tile that we can work. Um, sometimes the AI doesn't always put uh, the best citizen uh, management in a tool to begin with. Uh, but typically something two food, two production, or if it's, you know, like three food, one, one production, I would opt for a tile like that just to kind of get some initial early growth. Uh, to get some population going but let's see what the the wondrous desert to our north uh, contains for us like to the apples on the dead sea shore all ashes to the taste hmm so the dead sea is good which actually that I mean, it's not the most powerful wonder, but the fact that as a forward military base, instantly healing, it, should there be an instance of invasion, uh, instantly being able to heal your troops when they rest next to it for a full turn is a pretty good, and plus it is a uh, freshwater uh, lake source. If I And, you know, two faith, two culture. Not so much interested in the faith as much, um... Because from Egypt's build, it doesn't look like we're going to be opting for any kind of like really big early religion gambit. Um, but the plus two culture is always nice. And that does remind me to actually look up the Sphinx and see what kind of... What kind of thing we're dealing with. Plus one faith and plus one culture. Plus two faith if built next to a wonder, cannot be built next to another sphinx, can be built on the floodplains. Mm. That's not, not as great, not as great as, uh, you know, I might not even bother building that except for maybe a couple for some early culture boosts. Um, so, I mean, as of right now, based on the sieve, I mean, we're pretty much open as far as what victory path we want to go down. There's not, you know, I'm not seeing a huge screaming strength as far as Cleopatra is concerned. Um, like I was briefly mentioning earlier, usually I'm on the other side of trying to conquer, um, of trying to conquer Cleopatra just because she is uh, very annoying to deal with as an AI. Uh, she does not shut up, and uh, she thinks that your army always sucks until you're on her doorstep and conquering her. It looks like barbarians. Um, I went ahead and opted for the, the second slinger, uh, because you still don't know what um, what the overall rest of the train with uh, is going to be like. After this one, um, I may opt for... Um, a builder, because it does look like we are going to be fairly safe. It looks like we are going to be fairly safe as far as barbarians are concerned, and as far as other foreign interests are concerned. Uh, just because we've got the you know the ice caps to the south, the, this mountain range um, to our west, and then it looks like ocean to our east. And again, I'm kind of hoping. In heaven. Then when I die. That is animal husbandry. And we will half research archery. I'm kind of hoping that this land opens up into something a lot um, a lot more expansive. I'm hoping this might be some kind of a fractal map and this is just a snaky continent. Uh, just because that'll you know, boost for the wheel. Ah, that's good. That's, I think that's our unique unit is the wheel. Let's check it out. Yeah, our unique unit is the wheel, so I mean, we for uh, for giggles, we might just uh, go down mining, grab our unique unit, and uh, build a couple just because, uh, really, why not? Um, the good news is they are, they are horse-based, 
which just simply means that they are faster uh, than than melee units. Uh, melee units do suffer from the fact that they are a little bit um, slower in this game. Um, the more essentially the the, the the cavalry units why they're so strong is that they're able to shrink the distance with the the, the latest movement um, restrictions with Civ six preventing say for instance when I move over to this tile it takes up all my my turns or into the forest it takes up all my turns it really really slows down the movement of um, of any kind of melee or ranged unit so Calvary, the fact that they can move quicker, are just very, very good for blitzing uh, the enemies. And it looks like this was a lake, not a uh, coastline. So this uh, this could have, at the very well, worst case scenario, this is this is a good area to set up uh, to set up a, a nice little um, you know four or five cities all around here between the uh, the Dead Sea to the north. Um, Unfortunately, all of the tiles around the Dead Sea are not very good, so maybe something like a town right there uh, to not be totally wasted by uh, production, not be completely wasted. Um, I mean, we could build the Petra up here, but... Um, you know, I find that on Deity, the AI tends to, to pick up the Petra uh, fairly often. And they tend to waste it in a city that is, um, you know, has like four desert tiles in it or, or two desert tiles. And it, it's, you know, I've never, you know, on Deity level, I've never really beelined for or gone for it. So, I mean, we'll see. Um, I am going to send my Slingers over this way to deal with the Spearman camp. Um, that'll be fun. Uh, to get the, the boost towards archery. And the scout, we're going to head to the east to see what's over across that mountain range. Um, I am really starting to get the suspicion here that we are on an island. Um, which again is going to make for a very interesting game. And if the, but if this, the good news is if we are on an island map, um, this is, this is a decent sized island. This is a good size to, uh, to really just stack a lot of cities and to create the production and the infrastructure that we're going to need to keep up with the AI, um, without the ability to go into, uh, major combat here, uh, early on to knock one out. Um, typical start, I actually am going to go for God King with Discipline, simply because I want the Faith to be starting to generate right now in order to get a, uh, an early Pantheon. Um, not that it's, um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, not that, you know, it, it's going to be a, a big deal one way or the other, but if we do pick up something um, like the, the Desert Pantheon, that might be useful, that might be fun. Um... Not that I see a big use for faith in this game um, so far. I'm right. uh, gonna go craftsmanship. Usually try to beeline political philosophy right away. Um, balancing between uh, early boosts between state workforce, early empire, foreign trade. Um, as much as possible, because inevitably at some point, one of these boosts we're not going to get, uh, especially on a map like this, but if, I know we can get that boost for sure. We've got the builder in the queue already, and um, you know, hopefully we can actually crank out a district here pretty soon or, or get uh, Rocketette up to six population uh, very quickly, or you know, stumble upon a continent. And there's our archery boost, just in the nick of time.
swap those units around and knock this slinger out. I shot an arrow into the air. It fell to earth. I knew not where. Okay. Now that archery is complete... See, we're not going to be able to hit anything with farming right away right now. And, um, honestly what I should have done is I should have switched that off of archery, you know, I, right before uh, it researched and, and cranked out another slinger just because they're stupidly cheap to, up, uh, to, to upgrade with gold. Um, but I, again, I think we're pretty safe. I don't think we're going to have any early war opportunities, so that's uh, not going to be a big factor. Um, let's pick up mining. And the worker, straightforward enough. Right. And that should be pretty good. You know, I don't usually go for an early monument, but in this case, um, I don't feel like we need to get a third archer. Um, usually I go for the third archer, but the monument, I think the extra two culture per turn is going to help even things out and um, help us, in a sense, keep up um, short without having to rely on uh, the military to do so. Hey, we got free experience and a free boost. I like that. Okay. It would be nice if there's another civilization over here just to meet and trade with. Um, to do something with. I mean, geez. <laughs> I'd like to at least use one of the civilizations... Uh, Unique bonuses or traits or something. Come on. I'd even accept a schizophrenic leader next door. Scythia could be fun. Fighting Scythia. She always likes to rage. And, uh... The, the island scenario is getting uh, more and more realistic here. Um, the good news... If we look at... Oh, see, it went to a tile I don't want it to go to. Um, generally, like I said before, I don't try to micromanage this past the early, early game. Um, because things kind of hit a steam where it's just fine enough, but... Um, things like it switching over to that to the diamond mine for the extra few turns, it really kind of uh, was not so great. Just because you can see it, you know, it says nine turns here when we were working that, and it five turns to growth into uh, now, and production otherwise is pretty much th is the same. And you know, we, we, we could have possibly had uh, we could have possibly had three people by now, and we could have been working all three of the sheep. But it is what it is. And now that I am watching barb camps pop up left and right on our on our um, on our little continent, uh, our Egyptian continent, uh, I am beginning to seriously consider building just a couple of the war chariots just for roaming um, barbarian killing purposes, uh, because that is not something that we want to to be dealing with constantly this whole game uh, now what is very interesting about this particular content uh, continent is that not only do we have access to now oh, this is coast this is not going to be fresh water so this is out as far as a water source uh, but this 
See, when, when I'm thinking in terms of city planning and city management for building up my empire in the early game, I look for regions, regions that can eventually get good, you know, get a lot of farms in, get, you know, obviously get, get mines in as much as possible and get a place for industrial districts. Um, because I, I find that if you can really get somewhere around seven cities by about turn, you know, 100 to 120, you're going to be pretty fine for winning the game on Deity. Um, and you're going to be pretty solid uh, no matter what. In this case, we can definitely fit a lot of cities in. Uh, I like the fact that we do have a lot of wheat to work. Uh, we do have uh, plains tile, which just means more farms, more farms, more farms. And it looks like um, we're going to have to rely a lot on internal trade routes because this is um, short of that being some kind of miracle going off into uh, the area. Um, this is this this is our continent. This is what we've got to deal with. So um, we don't even have so much as a city state to help us out. So we are going to make a very insular, schizophrenic uh, Cleopatra game. You know, any you know anyone that we uh, anyone that meets us is obviously the enemy. You know, what do they know? And of course, of course, the Scottwood City just to get in the way. Um, I'm not going to get the third sheep yet. I'm actually going to hit the diamonds. Um, for one, just, you know, in, in, just for when the amenities do eventually hit over. I mean, it'll be a while, but uh, most importantly, I want the boost for... Uh, there is a minor resource uh, boost that I do want to pick up. Um, we don't really have a big purpose to rush irrigation right now, so we're not going to bother with it for a little while. Um, oh, look, foreign trade boost. Perfect. Because we're not going to fight a continent anytime soon. And state workforce. Okay. Okay. I can I can live with this. I can live with these boosts. That was worth it. And the enemy scout. Got to go down. Um, but anyway, as I was saying, I was, I was typically thinking uh, in terms of regions. I think the strongest region that we can create is kind of settling down here in the southern grasslands area. Um, and then that eventually... And of course we got to wait one more turn for mining for this guy. So we're just going to skip the turn. And I don't want to attack him in the forest. But I think I'm going to go ahead and crank out a settler. Um, we got, you know, we're, we're pretty well defended. This isn't going to be a horseman camp or anything, you know, this is just going to be a normal barbarian camp. There's nothing uh, to be worried about over here. Um, you know, as we work our way around, it's probably going to end up being, um, you know, we're probably going to have barbarian camps spawn all around here consistently. But in this case, um, given the hand that we're dealt, uh, there's really two options here. One is to take to the sea as quickly as possible, which we're certainly going to, to start doing. Um, but more importantly than that, you know, I don't need to mine the resource. I've actually got the, uh, the boost already from the goody hut. I forgot about that. Um, in that case, you go back and get the sheep. So what I'm considering here is, um, you know, I know essentially I was originally thinking maybe just get a couple chariot archers to have out there uh, to roam around, kill some barbarians. Um, but I'm contemplating right now seeing if there's any, you know, the question is do I look at, and do I get bronze working to see where the iron is, if there's any iron? Do I half build sailing because ideally we want to get a boost for that and we want to start going immediately for shipbuilding and we want to get celestial navigation which of course is going to require astrology and sailing because um, the only thing about revealing iron right now is that it's not like it does us any good whatsoever 
and nor really does the wheel because we don't have a lot of rivers, which again kind of hurts our unique ability. Um, I am going to have research sailing and uh, I'm going to go that route because we do want to be able to embark sooner rather than later and uh, a strong navy is going to be uh, key to this game because what I'm thinking already at this point is e we do, we, we've got uh, essentially three routes available for victory um, because we're we're not going to go for religion um, yeah perfectly timed without craftsmanship inspiration is a mere reed shaken in the wind I want to change out anything. I don't think I do. We'll probably get Ilkum after we get Pantheon. Um, because we need to have... We need 14 more turns if nobody else gets Pantheon to get a Pantheon. And I do definitely want one of those. Um, in the meantime, we are going to work to block... I don't need that. Boring. Now, if I do recall, there is actually an achievement if I put the pyramids and the sphinx adjacent to one another on a floodplain, um, which we could do. Uh, we could go and try to beeline immediately for the um, for the pyramids, which actually wouldn't be a bad infrastructure move. I'm going to crank out the first settler for sure and see actually what do we need for... We need masonry and we need to build a quarry to get the boost for that. And this is one of those cases where you don't have any stone or anything to quarry. So uh, I don't think we're going to go that route. I don't think we're going to... I don't think we're going to be the Egyptians with the pyramids in this game. I'm sorry to say. That's kind of a travesty. And I hope this scout doesn't die, but he should be okay. This scout's going to do something stupid and run away or fortify. We'll have a promotion and this guy to attack us. He's got to move across the river. Um, but mostly we just want to keep sight on this camp so that way we don't get any a ridiculously annoying... Um, ridiculously annoying spawns. Um, but fortunately, and I'm going to give him faster movement on hills because this guy's this guy's from the the other encampment from that we killed first, and he just he just needs to die. His encampment is gone. His days are over. And now that we have, we're going to have the first settler. It's going to be start. It's going to be time to start planning this out now. So, normally I don't go too much for science districts just because I rely on population and expansion to take care of science, but given the fact that we do have a decent looking mountain range over here, and let's chase that scout, um, that could be a good, you know, that, that could be a good little, uh, look, good little area. And the key here is that we're going to want to stack as many of these cities as closely together as is humanly possible. Um, again, I'm going to go south to start because that's where the most productive fertile land for my, my empire is going to be. And we're not going to go too far away from the city, so what we're probably going to do is come over, I mean, right here. If we go right here... Let's say that's a city. We would probably then want another city right here. And then unfortunately that's kind of it for our freshwater sources. Um... 
Because here, this city will at least be able to, you know, get some, you know, we'll be able to get some production, we'll be able to get some good stuff going from, we'll be able to steal, in other words, this mine district and that, these floodplains from Rockadet. You know, it'll limit Rockadet's growth a little bit, but it'll make this city not completely, totally useless. Um, other than as, I mean, primarily the reason why we're going to settle that to begin with is, A, we want commercial district, maybe even a harbor, um which may be up here actually and then an industrial zone so that way you know maybe right there the industrial zone can hit these two cities together and we can make a good triangle within these cities um, hmm. so I think the first thing to do here is we're gonna go here we're gonna settle that city first That's not necessarily going to be our second city, but that'll be a good uh, second brat. And we could probably put another city down here just for the silver, the deer, you know, again, another industrial. Because this we're going to want to maximize, you know, this little central hill district because there's no production anywhere else as far as... Uh, and yeah, let's go ahead and build another cellar. Let's go for it. Uh, no, actually, that's, 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 that's not... Uh, we got two turns. Let's get another builder out. Um, there's this is really the only kind of area here where there is any kind of significant um, hills. Uh, so you know all of this is plain. So everything we're gonna have to maximize the amount of uh, bonuses that we are getting from that area in order to kind of make the best empire that we possibly can with this particular island. Um, now very likely what we're going to do is expand to another island, either to our, looks like there's another island to our immediate um, east, and maybe something to the west. Uh, we actually still have to explore a little bit of that. Um, and let's look at Settler. What's the name of our... Our continent name is actually Laurentia. Okay. Hmm. You know, I wanted to change to Ilkum to make the builder go quicker. But I still want to get my Pantheon, so I'm going to I'm going to hold steady there. And we are going to intercept this scout right here because he is not being very fun. So let's look at our continent again. So we are on the continent of Laurentia, and I guess we didn't get a double boost from the uh, from the last uh, from the Goody Hut. We just uh, we discovered Kumari Kandem. So Laurentia, all right. Well, all of Laurentia shall be Egypt. You know, the great Egyptian empire uh, shall own Laurentia. And let's... I'm gonna go for half-building early empire because I want to get the boost towards settlers. Uh, because we're just gonna want to crank out um, almost to the exclusion of all else. Settler, settler, settler. No, oh, right there. All right, fresh water here, mountains. Good enough for me. We're going to make this spot right there another city spot. All right. So Memphis, 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 Memphis. You are going to build us. Nope, oh, I need to switch off sail. Um, hmm, this is actually quite the dilemma.
All right, so I've got sailing and astrology half. You know, a sailing I didn't switch off quick enough, but you know, those are about half. Our odds of meeting another civilization are slim. So I'm thinking, and we need to get the trade routes up as quickly as possible, because we need to go trade route and we need to get apprenticeship. Um, those are our infrastructure priorities. But because of our start, we also have the dilemma of wanting to get out there and meet people. We want to be able to see what the surrounding terrain's like. So ships takes on an unusually higher priority compared to normal. And the harbor actually ends up being a nice, good trade route boost as well. But... Let's, for now, let's go down the currency route and let's, let's get things cranked out. Um, this seems to be as good a spot as any. I'm going to put in a cut here, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode as we expand out uh, the, the island empire of uh, Egypt. You know, we'll see you soon.